We like to say that nutritional biochemistry can be very complicated, but the solution to living with any form of diabetes doesn't have to be. And that, my friends, is actually the truth. You don't have to be a master of biology or nutritional biochemistry or metabolism in order to understand how you can maximize your own personal health. What I want to do today is go through some frequently asked questions and give you an understanding of ways that you can apply the Mastering Diabetes Method to your life starting today and get you set up for your optimal health if you haven't already done so. We know through plenty of experience and having helped over 10,000 people that there are three major topics that make all the difference in maximizing your metabolic health when living with any form of diabetes. Number one, moving your body for a minimum of 30 minutes per day. The reason we say that is because moving your body can have a profound impact on every tissue, starting with your brain and going all the way down to your Achilles tendon. Number two, intermittent fasting. We prefer intermittent fasting on a 16-8 schedule. That is fasting for 16 hours and eating only approximately eight hours per day. This is not a one-size-fits-all prescription for everyone, but if you effectively cut out late-night snacks and you drink zero-calorie beverages and you eliminate your breakfast, that can have a very massive impact on controlling your blood glucose, helping you reduce your body weight, and continuing to improve your overall metabolic health. And number three, this is the big one, eating a low-fat plant-based diet. The reason we tell people to do this is because when you consume fruits and starchy vegetables and grains and legumes as your primary calorie sources, you significantly reduce your total fat intake and you significantly reduce your saturated fat intake. Saturated fat is the number one most powerful nutrient that can stimulate or promote the process of insulin resistance. And when that happens, that can cause your blood glucose to go high and it can cause your glucose to stay high for many weeks to months to years. And if you just do those three simple things, you can see results in a very quick manner. It doesn't have to take weeks. It doesn't have to take months. It doesn't have to take years. You can actually see the result on your blood glucose meter within days. And I am not exaggerating when I say that. So we know that this information is relatively straightforward and that's fantastic. But that is unto itself doesn't always answer all the questions. There's still a whole collection of things that we are constantly asked. And so I want to spend a little bit of time answering these really important questions for you. The first question is about sleep. People ask, is it possible to sleep better? What am I doing wrong? Okay, I'm looking for better sleeping tips. Does anybody have any suggestions? Now, when it comes to sleeping, there's effectively three different things that I like to tell people to do that have a very massive impact on your ability to number one, get to sleep and number two, stay asleep. Okay. There are two, there are two aspects of sleep that are very important in order for you to feel rested and actually be recovered so that you can use your brain and use your body effectively the next day. Okay. The first thing that I like to tell people to do is to make a bedtime routine. Okay. The world in which we live has become increasingly complicated over the course of time. Social media works a number on our brain. It increases anxiety and it increases this feeling of missing out on life because so many other people are doing so many other cool things and you're not because you're just sitting in front of your couch doing nothing. Okay? This can work a number of challenging emotional processes inside of your brain that can lower your self-esteem and that can make you feel like you are an inadequate person in comparison to other people. This in turn can also make it such that when you go to sleep, your mind is constantly cranking and thinking about what, what should I do? What can I do? Am I living my best life? What should I do at work? How can I talk to these people? How come this friendship isn't working out properly? My mom's coming into town. What do I do here? Am I exercising enough? And it's hard to turn that chatter off. Making a bedtime routine is one of the most powerful things that you can do to actually tell that chatter to at least subside, if not completely go away. And a bedtime routine is something that's very simple to construct. What I like to do is, number one, take a very warm shower about 30 minutes to 60 minutes before I go to sleep. 
When you take a nice warm shower, you actually dilate blood vessels and it causes blood flow to move to your extremities. And that's a good thing because it causes your blood vessels to dilate and it increases blood flow to all of your extremities. As soon as you are done with your shower, you actually change your environment from a warm environment to a slightly cooler environment. And as a result of that, blood vessels in your extremities contract. They contract and they send blood back to your internal uh, viscera, which is your, uh, your digestive tissue. And then it also sends blood back to your brain. And that's a good thing because it allows your brain to actually calm down. So if you can simply take a warm shower and get into a more meditative state and relax, the change in temperature plus the opportunity for your brain to slow down just a little bit can help. Number two, prior to performing that bedtime routine, go and exercise. Use your body like I mentioned earlier. When you use your body, you actually are able to deplete your internal battery charge. So if you envision yourself as waking up with 100% battery charge, and over the course of the day, that battery becomes less and less charged, by the time you get to bed, presumably the charge is relatively small. Exercise is something that helps you deplete your battery, and that's actually a good thing because that means that by the time you go to bed, you'll actually be very sleepy, and it'll be a signal for both your muscles and your brain to calm down. Number three, using guided meditations is very powerful. For people that have a difficult time falling asleep, you can go find an app on the app store. Just literally type in guided meditation and there are a number of different apps that you can download. A guided meditation is a meditation that has some very calming music in the background and somebody's voice speaking in the foreground. And the voice usually does something like a body scan and has you pay attention to the top of your head and then shift your focus down to your eyes and then down to your nose and then down to your mouth and so on and so forth. And by the time you get all the way to your feet, chances are you're going to be asleep. Every single time I put on a guided meditation, I'm usually asleep within three minutes. I can't even really get below my neck because by that point, I'm so relaxed that I fall asleep very quickly. So when I've given this recommendation to other people, they implement it immediately and find that it helps them get to sleep. And then if you happen to wake up in the middle of the night, put on another guided meditation and use that to fall back asleep again. And if you get into this pattern of developing a bedtime routine, plus exercising during the day, plus using guided meditations before sleep, it can be a very, very, very powerful way to calm your mind down and to keep you asleep when you do. Okay, the next question becomes, how can I gain muscle as a person living with type 1 diabetes? Okay. This is very common actually in the world of type 1 diabetes because there's a lot of individuals who are not trying to lose weight. In fact, they're trying to gain weight specifically by gaining muscle. Okay, How can you do that? Is it just as simple as eating more food? Should I be eating more protein? How am I going to gain muscle? There's a lot of confusion in the world about muscle gain and protein consumption. And it, it, it can seem pretty logical that if you're trying to gain weight and you're trying to gain primarily muscle because muscle is made out of protein, then all you have to do is just eat more protein. But I will tell you one thing very, very plainly. You cannot eat your way into more muscle by itself. I will say that one more time. You cannot eat your way into more muscle by itself. If I were to theoretically eat a diet that is very high in protein and just continue to eat that diet, I would not gain muscle mass. The reason is because muscle mass is a reaction to another physiological state known as hypertrophy. So effectively, what you have to do if you want to gain muscle, either living with type 1 diabetes or not, is you have to induce muscular hypertrophy, which is a complicated scientific way of describing placing your musculature in a high work environment that stimulates the muscle tissue to grow. Okay. You can perform exercises that are usually weight-bearing exercises that require the use of either your body as resistance or external weights as resistance. And if you perform strength training routines that stimulate a hypertrophic process, what that means is that the muscle tissue is used significantly during the workout. And then in the post-workout state, the muscle tissue becomes very hungry for nutrients, including glucose and amino acids and fatty acids. And then in addition to that, the muscle is also poised to grow because if it can grow just a little bit stronger, then it's going to be able to withstand the same amount of strength training, if not a little bit more, the next time. So number one, if you're trying to gain muscle, you must induce muscle hypertrophy, period, end of story. Then number two, 
when refueling your muscle tissue and when refueling your body in general, I don't want you to worry specifically about how much protein you're eating. In general, our recommendations are to eat somewhere between 1.0 and 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram ideal body weight per day. And if you can achieve that, then you're providing yourself with a significant amount of amino acids that are going to enable you to recover from the hypertrophic movements that are then going to stimulate muscle tissue to grow. So all you have to do is calculate your ideal body weight in kilograms and then multiply that number either by 1.0 or 1.2 or 1.4 or 1.6, depending on how active you are, the higher your activity level, the higher your protein intake could be. And those numbers are going to give you an indicator of approximately how much protein to consume on a daily basis. The last thing I'll say about this is that people over obsess about how much protein they should be eating on a daily basis, but they forget to understand that carbohydrate is absolutely a very important macronutrient for muscle growth as well. Okay. The reason for that is because your muscle stores glucose as glycogen. And when you refuel your muscle tissue post-workout with predominantly carbohydrate with some protein in it, the carbohydrate gets broken down into glucose. The glucose gets stored as glycogen inside of your muscle tissue that will enable you to perform more work. And by performing more work, you can then induce more of a hypertrophic state. You can then also refuel again with more carbohydrate and some protein. And this process enables you to gain mass over the course of time. Third question we receive from a lot of people is they say, you know what? I understand you guys have a coaching program. Do I really need coaching? Is that something that I have to implement into my life or can I just do this by myself? Now, what we have discovered over the course of the last six years, working with more than 10,000 people is that, you know what? You could absolutely change your lifestyle on your own. In fact, I'm living proof. Robbie's living proof. Every single one of our coaches is living proof that you can absolutely change your lifestyle on your own. You don't need anyone else to go through the process with you. But, the one thing I will say to that is changing your lifestyle by yourself can be very hard. Research shows that committing and having accountability while going through a lifestyle change process is the most important key to actually getting it done. And if you haven't gotten it done so far, if you haven't successfully changed over your lifestyle to eating a more plant strong diet, then every moment that you take where you're not making that change is counting against you. So if you haven't done it so far and you're constantly thinking about doing it, then having somebody on your team to help you implement the process is exactly why we are here. I want you to think about it this way. Knowledge is not enough. You can know everything there is to know about the benefits of a plant-based diet and how it's going to lower your blood pressure and your cholesterol and your blood glucose values and make you stronger and improve your cognitive power. That's fine. Go read as many books as you want, and I don't care. I think it's fantastic. Arm yourself with as much science as you possibly can. But just because you have that knowledge does not mean you're going to implement it in your life. The implementation is the hard part. The implementation is the important part. And if you are having a difficult time implementing this in your life and you want somebody to help you hold your hand and point you in the right direction and guide you towards making the right choices on a day-to-day -day basis, despite all of the complexities of your lifestyle and all of the logistics that could be in the way, that's where a coach comes in. I hope that makes sense. Hey, I'm Cyrus Kambata, co-creator of the Mastering Diabetes Method, which has helped thousands of people reverse insulin resistance and take control of their lives, no matter what type of diabetes they're living with. Do you want to know all of our tips, tricks, and secrets? They're right here in our New York Times bestselling book, Mastering Diabetes which you can find at masteringdiabetes.org slash book. If you're ready to master diabetes, pick up a copy today. You won't be disappointed. Now, the next question we get asked all the time is, what do you refer to as success if you are living with either type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes? In other words, how do I know if I have actually succeeded at doing what you claim is possible, which is reversing insulin resistance, improving your blood glucose control, and increasing your longevity? How do I know when this is all done? And the answer is, guess what? It's never done. It's literally never done. And the reason it's never done is because 
as you improve your health. There's a number of different biomarkers that are going to be changing simultaneously. We refer to these collections of biomarkers as PILAF, P-I-L-A-F. These are the what we refer to as being the most important biomarkers that can have a dramatic impact on your longevity and at reducing your chronic disease risk. I will walk through them one by one by one. P, P stands for pressure, blood pressure. As you change your diet, as you change your lifestyle, as you become more plant strong, your blood pressure is likely to decrease. If you already have normal blood pressure and you're not hypertensive, fantastic. We're going to keep you there. But if you are hypertensive, either slightly hypertensive or quite hypertensive, then eating a plant-based diet can make some significant improvements in your overall blood pressure, both systolic and diastolic. And you can watch them decrease by more than 10 points, 20 points, 30 points within the first few months of adopting a plant-based diet. Dr. Walter Kempner was the first one to discover this back in 1950. He was a professor at Duke University, and he demonstrated without a shadow of a doubt that eating a plant-strong diet, a plant-exclusive diet, which was the rice fruit diet that he created, where people ate nothing but white rice, sugar, fruits, and fruit juice, that people who ate that diet were, were able to significantly reduce their blood pressure, some by as many as 100 points. And as soon as they started to regress and put more animal protein back into their diet, their blood pressure went right back up. Okay. So your blood pressure is important and it is something that you want to take into account at all times. Number two, I in PILAF stands for ideal body weight. Your ideal body weight matters. You can calculate your ideal body weight by picking up a copy of the Mastering Diabetes book and we teach you exactly how to make that calculation. And once you know exactly what your ideal body weight is, the goal is to try and move towards that ideal body weight and then stay at that ideal body weight permanently. The, the weight loss world has worked a number on people's heads and teaches you how to lose weight quickly. The problem is that when you lose weight quickly, you end up gaining weight quickly. And then you lose weight quickly again, then you gain weight quickly and you end up on a yo-yo pattern. And this can become very dangerous and can wreak a lot of havoc on your brain, on your emotions, and many digestive organs. So you want to achieve your ideal body weight and get there and you want to stay there over the course of time. In PILAF, the L stands for lipids. It's very important that your lipid panel, including your total cholesterol, your LDL cholesterol, your HDL cholesterol, and your triglycerides all become normal over the course of time. If you're already there, fantastic. We're going to keep you there. But if you're either your high, your, your total cholesterol is high, your LDL cholesterol is high, your HDL cholesterol may be low, or your triglyceride level may be high. If that's the case, then eating a plant-based diet and operating in the mastering diabetes ecosystem will help normalize all four of those lipid biomarkers. So that's very important, something we want to pay attention to at all times. In PILAF, the A stands for A1C. Your A1C is, a, is the single most important marker of your average blood glucose concentration. And the goal is to try and get your A1C, if you're living with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, to below 5.7. In fact, I was just reading a study that demonstrated that you're, the goal is to get you between about 5.0 and 5.5. And if you can get to that, that, those, that, that A1C range and stay there for a long period of time, then you are maximizing your opportunity to, uh, to uh, so you're maximizing your longevity and significantly reducing your chronic disease risk. Finally, the F in PILAF stands for fasting blood glucose. If you want to lower your fasting blood glucose, then the mastering diabetes method is something that will definitely get you there without question. Because as you reverse insulin resistance, your fasting blood glucose will come down and it will come down measurably. And you can see the difference on your blood glucose meter every single day. So the original question was, well, how do I know when I'm done? And the answer is you are technically never done. However, we want you to pay attention to the P, the I, the L, the A, and the F together so that you can reduce all of them simultaneously and we can get to a normal value for every single one of them. Your blood pressure, your ideal body weight, your lipids, your A1C, and your fasting glucose. And once you have achieved those values, we want you to stay at those values for many years. So you can think about this as an exercise in, at first, I'm going to try and normalize these values. And then secondarily, my next job is to try and keep these values and integrate them into a lifestyle that is as sustainable as possible. So that's the most important way that you can think about this in the long term. Now, the final question that we get from a lot of people is, what is the number one thing that I can do to lose weight quickly? 
Now let's go backwards to what I said a couple minutes ago, which is losing weight rapidly. The weight loss world, the weight loss industry is full of books and programs and specials and products and supplements that teach you how to lose weight. In fact, this is a trillion dollar industry that's only gotten more complicated and more, I would say, unethical over the course of time. The reason I say that is because weight loss is actually not that hard. It's not that difficult to understand from a biological perspective, but it can be difficult to implement as we touched on before. Losing weight is literally a balance between how many calories you put into your body and how many calories you expend. And I know the weight loss world wants to complicate it and make it sound like it just can't possibly be a question of calories in versus calories out. It can't possibly be that simple. But biologically speaking, it is that simple. And so the goal is to try and get your calorie intake to be less than your calorie expenditure and you create a calorie deficit. And if you can create that calorie deficit and you can maintain that calorie deficit, that will translate to weight loss. If you're trying to keep your body weight normal, then your energy intake and your energy expenditure must be approximately equal. And then if you're trying to gain weight, your energy intake has to be larger than your energy expenditure. And as a result of that, you will create, again, a calorie surplus, and that's going to help you gain weight. So what we're trying to do is create a calorie deficit because you want to lose weight. And I will say a couple of things about this. Number one, losing weight fast is not smart. I do not want you to lose weight fast for a couple of reasons. Like we talked about earlier, yo-yo dieting can happen all the time when you lose weight rapidly and then gain the weight rapidly again. Okay, well, Even if you're using a pharmaceutical agent like Ozempic. It's a GLP-1 receptor agonist that's going to help you lose weight, but stimulate weight loss without changing your habits. It's not a sustainable path in the long term. What I want you to do rather than thinking about how can I lose weight quickly is how can I change my habits so that I can naturally and consistently lose about one to one and a half pounds per week and keep that going over the course of time. I want you to focus on habit change. I don't want you to worry about the number on your scale because the number on your scale is a side effect of your lifestyle. So if you are eating foods that are lower in calorie density than you would find in the standard American diet, that's a great way of lowering your total energy intake. And what that means is that you're going to be eating foods that contain less calories per bite. And by doing that, you can get full relatively quickly. And as a result of that, you end up naturally taking on less calories than you thought you would. And that keeps you full so that you don't feel like you're hungry all the time. Number two, you need to have to must do this consistently. I don't want you to just eat calorie dilute foods today and then go out and eat a hamburger tomorrow and then fluctuate or say, you know what? Today's my cheat day. I'm going to go eat a bunch of ice cream and a bunch of brownies because I've earned the ability to do that. If you do that, you're setting yourself up for success. You're going through a mental yo-yo that's going to translate into a biological yo-yo. And number three, movement. Movement is extremely helpful. Not only can movement help deplete your battery and get you to go to sleep at night like we talked about earlier, but movement is extremely helpful to increase your total energy expenditure. When you move your body on a daily basis, you are performing work using your muscles. And as a result of that, these muscles become very hungry. You are expending more calories than you would if you were just sitting on your butt. And as a result of that, your energy expenditure goes up and that helps you create that calorie deficit. And by doing that, you can maintain that on a daily basis. And now that calorie deficit translates to weight loss over the long term. And finally, intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is extremely powerful at stimulating an autophagic process, which is effectively a cellular recycling program. And it happens in all tissues simultaneously. In addition to that, when you perform intermittent fasting, it's a great way to reduce your calorie intake without even knowing it. It can get a little bit challenging to perform intermittent fasting the first week you're doing it. But after about three to four days, your brain responds to a periodic food intake. And as a result of that, it stops sending out hunger signals when food is not available. If you can do this and you can get used to an intermittent fasting regimen, that right there will help you lower your energy intake in combination with exercise, which will increase your energy expenditure. The combination of the two of those creates that calorie deficit we're looking for. You make that calorie deficit a consistent approach in your lifestyle. Weight loss will happen. It's biologically proven. That being said, I hope this answers a lot of your questions. 
and gets you a little bit more insight into what is the power of eating a plant-based diet and how can you troubleshoot many of the things that may come along. If you're interested in getting someone to help you implement this with you and getting out of the mode of just sitting on the couch, listening to this information or reading books and saying, okay, cool. I will do this one day. I will do this one day and not actually doing it. I strongly urge you to schedule a free consultation to talk with someone on our team who's going to show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people. Okay. It's important that we get you to a point where you are motivated to make the change yourself. And then we hand you a partner to do this together with you. All right. What you can do is go to the Mastering Diabetes website, www.masteringdiabetes.org and click on the nav bar at the very top that says personalized coaching, or you can just go to masteringdiabetes.org slash start. And if you do that, then you can, you can, uh, you'll see a questionnaire and it's important that you answer all of the questions to the best of your ability, because we want to be able to help you and help assess whether you're a good fit for a personal coach. Okay. There's a limited number of spots available. And that's why it's extremely important to find a good fit between you and a coach. Just complete the application process, show up to your free discovery session and have a pen and paper ready. We're going to go through everything with you. We're going to come up with a game plan that's going to work and it's going to work because it's based off of your responses, off of your lifestyle, off of your preferences and off of your unique metabolic health. Okay. We're here to help. If you're looking for that help, reach out to us. If you feel like you got this on your own, then you got this. Either way, we hope this was very powerful. We hope this is helpful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us on any social media platform, or you can also send us an email at team at masteringdiabetes.org, and we will see you next time. Have a great day.